the 2022 Spanish Grand Prix was actually a pretty good race for once. Gone are the days of a guaranteed Hamilton win and in comes the good racing and actual drama. But I'll save that all for later because we're going to go over all that has happened this weekend in one short video. Let's get into it. After going to probably my least favourite track in F1 which produced the dullest race I've seen in a while, we got back on track by going to Spain. Home of one of the worst F1 tracks. Like seriously, why do we need a chicane at the end? Now writing this before the weekend has even started, I want to come back to this in two days and say that we saw 15 DNFs with Latifi and Stroll getting a Canadian one too. Well, that didn't happen, but instead we actually got overtakes, wheel to wheel combat and a new corner. But the chicane is still there, so I guess it cancels out. Coming into this race, we honour the 10 year anniversary of Pastor Maldonado's incredible win. Max winning 6 years ago in his first race for Red Bull at 18 years old. Oh yeah, and Lewis and Nico crashing. Good times, but into practice. A few teams bought upgrades to the Spanish Grand Prix and along with that some rookie drivers for FP1 and Robert Kubica. Ferrari topped the first practice timing boards as lower down the time and cheese Latifi was beaten by Nick De Vries. But on to free practice 2 and Lando Norris f***ed up his floor going over the curbs before Bottas' Alpha decided it didn't want to live. Albon then went on to do the same thing as Norris as he decided he wanted to try out the circuit with a wonky floor. Mercedes came back to finish 2nd and 3rd in FP2 which is good and all yes but that happened last time out and that didn't go well. Verstappen once again couldn't even get close to Leclerc who finished 1st again as Perez finished even lower in 7th. Not a great start for the Red Bulls. Latifi once again was beaten by his teammate with Albon finishing nearly a full second ahead of him. Going into FP3 on the Saturday, Schumacher had a fire, Perez had another stinker, Russell was ahead of Hamilton and Charles Leclerc topped the leaderboards. Just ordinary things. Aston Martin, still with Racing Point in its veins, tried to copy a big team's homework again, but it turns out Red Bull gave him the wrong answers. But it's all the same really. Leclerc first, Verstappen second, Bottas and Magnussen in the top 10, and Hamilton behind Russell. Oh yeah, and Latifi behind everyone that can set laps. But that's my work done for the free practice session, so let me hand you over to my first collab on this channel, Krishna Kandri. If you go on to enjoy his segment, definitely check out his channel. I promised to cover this topic on my channel several times. My lie. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. You know, sometimes you gotta do things because, well, traditions. And sometimes these traditions are nothing but irritating compulsions to make you tick a box more than anything productive. Bruh. And this year again, the F1 drivers will be embarking on one such traditional journey from the superficial hype storm of Miami to the home of the Hamilcar Barca. Something resembling a football team and the Spanish Inquisition. But the most important thing for us is that it's also home to the Circuit de... Circuit de Barcelona... Catalonia. Catalonia. God, that was a mouthful. Uh, luckily, it's also known as the Formula One Aramco Grand Premio de España. <laughs> Barcelona gets so much flack because compared to other historic circuits such as Monza, Imola, or Spa, this thing has a whopping pole to win conversion rate of 74%, which is even worse than Monaco, a circuit which is shaped like a paralyzed eel, which is all a fancy way of saying that qualifying is extra important for this race and pinning it into the wall has extra consequences. So, what the hell happened in quality? Oh, uh... Two personal best then so far for Mick Schumacher. Hangs left down the straight and yes, well in yes, then yes. the top 15. Nicholas Latifi can only go 18th. He's out of qualifying. Lance Stroll stays in the bottom five. Didn't improve during the final sector. Flashback. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Only 17th fastest. He's smashing with P16 at the moment, so we are out of the You must be kidding. The talk of the town last weekend was all about Aston Martin's upgrades, but it's still. It still oh sucks. God. Lando Norris is outside the top 10. He crosses the line, goes seventh fastest. Mick Schumacher out of the top 10. You've activated my trap card. What of Lando Norris? Yeah, time deleted. Outside of the top 10, which means Sainz goes ahead of Hamilton. 1.19.4 and Charles Leclerc spun. In fact, Pierre Gasly, oh, what has happened? We need to know who's going to come out in front. Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again oh, expecting shit. shit to change so it's turn 13 into 14 so you have a lot of steering angling and the back end of the car just couldn't live with it all right i mean that's it right i mean verstappen's got the pole lap and leclerc spun and signs is in p2 and present p3 
Everything's wrapped up, right? Of course not. I mean, this is a 2022 qualification, which means that we have one or two options for enjoyment. Either haha -ha, Latifi crash funny, or Max's engine gives up on him like an art major does on Hopes and Dreams. Well, you heard it, Martin. <laughs> Absolutely stark. Fed echo power. Remember it. That's man. Make it go. Verstappen's got no power, he says. Charles Leclerc powers wow. to the line and goes into the 118s and takes provisional pole. I mean, I personally had Latifi down for pole position, but you know, best late plans and all. But the other major thing to do is that Russell, Hamilton, Ricardo, Magnussen, and Schumacher are all faring pretty well. I mean, there are two passes in Q3. I mean, given that the Mercs used to bounce like a bunch of SoCal lowriders in preseason testing, whatever upgrades they brought this weekend seem to work. It'd be crazy if one of them won a podium. That's called foreshadow. And yeah, there's an entire second half of the grid, but let's be honest, they're not that important. Except for Aston Martin, because apart from tens of billions of dollars, Daddy Stroll is going to sacrifice the remainder of poor Seb's racing career. Though the vicious racing gods still demand more. <sighs> oh shit. So, thank you for doing the qualifying segment, Krishna. And uh, as I said before, definitely check out his channel. Links are up in the iCard in the top right and the top of the description. Now it's time to talk about the race. As the five lights went out, it was Leclerc who got the better start off the line, and into turn one, it was Charles who got in front of Verstappen covering off the inside line. It was all clean up front until Perez took a tighter line and nearly sent Russell to the shadow row. He managed to keep it going though, and it was all smooth until turn five as Magnussen attempted to race bumper cars with Hamilton, which sent both of them to the back of the grid. A pretty eventful lap one to say the least. Six laps later, Later, Carlos Sainz Mazepin off into the gravel and somehow kept his wheels spinning and was able to continue. I mean, you'd expect this from him at this point. He's DNF'd a few times in the gravel now, so he's got some experience. Two laps later and Verstappen one-upped his former teammate as he followed him into the gravel and kept it going as well. After falling behind his teammate and Russell, he had to chase down the Mercedes. What followed was a similar situation to Hamilton at Imola, but instead it was the Red Bull car that couldn't get past the Mercedes and this was mainly due to Max's DRS flap not opening. He did get past once after 12 laps stuck behind Russell, but he was re-overtaken by George as he defended well. Then three laps after this attack by Verstappen, cameras caught Leclerc going slowly and this time there was something strange with the engine and his car lost connection. Bear in mind that he was over 15 seconds clear of Russell after pitting and he was on his way to another Grand Slam but Ferrari blew it again, a massive swing in the championship. And the Grand Prix was still not even halfway from finishing, probably the most eventful Spanish Grand Prix in a while. Then Lance Stroll got punted by Sonoda but no one really cares. And then the boring part happened and nothing went on for the rest of the race. Bottas was up to third place for a few laps but as his tyres got older so did his positions as he fell to sixth near the end of the race. What was worth noting was that Hamilton got up to fourth place after being second last on the grid on lap one pretty decent drive. But then Mercedes lost it again as he was forced to reduce his speed to Williams level so that the car didn't overheat and retire him on the spot. Meaning that Sainz was able to pick up the pieces and finish fourth, his highest finish at Spain. And that was it, Red Bull 1-2 and George on the podium after a very impressive drive. And Max continues his ridiculous record of winning every race he's finished this season. So, a pretty good Spanish Grand Prix, well, at least the first part was. Big praise for Red Bull for another 1-2, Bottas for another incredible points finish in 6th, Ocon and Alonso both getting in the top 10 for a double Alpine points finish, and most importantly, Nicolas Latifi, who managed to finish ahead of his teammate and another car. Incredible scenes. And unlucky to Haas after starting 8th and 10th on the grid and somehow not getting a single point. But that's all for the Spanish Grand Prix. And just a quick word now, I might do another one of these on Monaco if it's better than bad. But if not, then it will have to be Canada in a few weeks time because I'm moving and I'm not going to be having any Wi-Fi for a couple of weeks. But that's all from me. Have a nice rest of your day. Subscribe to the channel. And thank you Krishna Kandri for collabing on the video. Goodbye.